Joining me in studio right now to discuss his re-election campaign for HD84 State Representative John Frulo. Welcome back to the show. Ted, good morning. It's great to be here. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. I appreciate you uh, stopping by today. How, how is the campaign going? It, it, it's busy. We're out there block walking. A lot of good uh, conversations going on with folks. Uh, a lot of folks seem to be happy with the job I've done, the way I've represented them. And uh, so it's pretty exciting. I asked your opponent this uh, because I, I know during, you know, uh, at least from folks who I've talked to who have uh, had his people knock on the door, uh, his campaign is asking, okay, what are the, the top issues to you? And they're kind of going through and asking what those questions are. Uh, for you, I'm assuming you're getting some, probably some of the same feedback as far as top issues. Uh, but what are some of those top issues that people are talking to you and your campaign about? You know, probably one of the top issues is border security, and I was proud to uh, be a co-author on that bill and work on it. And, you know, in essence, we put in over $800 million into border security, which is uh, basically a federal obligation, a federal issue, but it's a state problem, a state of Texas problem. And, uh, you know, I think that was highlighted uh, just recently when uh, – Colonel McCraw, of the, uh, head of the DPS, was out in Washington testifying in front of Homeland Security. And basically, he just said that, uh, uh, you know, that Governor Abbott and the Texas legislature did what, uh, you know, in essence, needed to be done. We're, we're picking up the ball, uh, not, not his exact words, but we funded what the federal government isn't doing. And, you know, I think that, that's, that's one of the big issues. That's one of the big concerns that, that people have. And so I was proud to be a part of that. Um, one of the other items that uh, people are real excited about was the, the tax deductions that we gave them, the 10000 increase in exemption. Uh, that, that's, you know, all the homeowners are getting that benefit. Uh, I was proud to be, uh, you know, a part of making that happen, the reduced fees for professional licenses that was part of the franchise tax uh, or a way around the franchise tax uh, to uh, tax those occupations that were supposed to be taken out a couple of years later. Well, we finally did that, uh, you know, when we worked on it last session, we got rid of those fees, $200 fees, the 25% reduction in franchise fees. I mean, I mean, the business owners are happy. That's money that they can keep in the local community. They can put back into their business, employ people, buy equipment, and you know. And so that, that's exciting. Your opponent has made an issue, and we talked about this last time. Uh, has made an issue, and those supporting him have also made an issue of leadership in the House, uh, and in particular the Speaker uh, and Speaker Strauss. Has that? Has that been relayed to you when you are knocking on doors, when people are knocking on doors? Is the average person out there in tune or in touch or do they care about who the speaker is? You know, for the, for the most part, uh, they they don't know who the speaker is. The speaker is located by the body of the House of Representatives, and, and so it's not like the governor, lieutenant governor, where they actually see that person on the ballot and vote for them. Um, what what they do tell me though is they're real happy with the results that we've done. They're happy that we've balanced the budget, that we grew the budget. Uh, Texas is growing. The people, you know, people are moving here for the opportunities. And what we've we've seen is that they're happy with it. They're happy with the way we've 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 uh, what we've done in the state. We've increased transportation funding by about five billion dollars without raising taxes. We balanced last the, the budget, which we've always done, uh, in, in a more descript and transparent budget. We're getting rid of a lot of the diversions with the uh, you know the current leadership that we have. Uh, we've reduced those from five billion by about you know four. I'm, I'm sorry, six to seven hundred million a year. Getting rid of those diversions. We got rid of the gas tax diversion. Um, you know, you look at we balanced the budget. We left three billion dollars unspent. We gave four billion dollars in tax reductions, and uh, on top of that, we have somewhere between ten and eleven billion dollars in our rainy day fund. So they're they're happy with the results. They like the results we're getting. And, uh, you know, you, you, any any item you look at, you look at where we are as far as gun rights. In, in this state, we have the best gun rights we have ever had. If you look at pro-life issues, we have the strictest laws on the books anywhere. And, and you know, and I was a big proponent of that. I worked on, uh, I was on uh, state affairs when uh, Jody Laudenberg's bill went through state affairs. And it went to calendars to be uh, selected to be put on the House floor. I was in calendars. I got to vote for it there. 
She has said, what a great job I did, what a proponent of that issue I was. And, you know, I was happy to vote for it on the House floor. So we've we've done all, all the matrix that look at the different items we've done. We've you know, we've built one of the, the be, you know, the best state in the, the country, the best state in the world. And we've done that by with the leadership that we have. And, and so, you know, they're excited about what what we've done and how how, you know, better we make their lives. The Is water it? plans we've worked on, you know, there's just so many different facets that uh, people are happy with where we're going. What they don't like is Washington. Visiting with Representative John Frulo seeking re-election in HD 84. I want to go back to immigration. We had, we had your opponent in last week, uh, and he brought up a, an amendment that uh, w- was put out there, and it would have moved, uh, he said, $90 million out of diversity training uh, to pay for, I think he put it, more more planes or you know, something more in the sky. Uh, said that you voted instead to keep that funding for diversity training. Well, what what, uh, what what he's missing the point on is, first off, what, what was happening in that first year, uh, or first thing I want to say is getting back to Colonel McCraw being very happy with what we did, the funding that we've done, uh, you know, the airplanes that we've provided, the the water support, the, the work, the, the 250 personnel on the border, the 50-hour work weeks, all of those things were items that were prioritized by the DPS. Uh, Tony Dale had an amendment that he put out on the the floor that uh, people are telling him, you know, it's probably not a good amendment to put out there, Tony. When Tony got out on the floor and was trying to explain it, he really couldn't explain it. Where the misnomer come in, comes at, and where basically the lie on this whole deal is they had that first year, uh, $47 million, $46, $47 million worth of airplanes. There are going to be two PC-12 Platus uh, uh, turboprops. There are going to be three caravans. Uh, that's a Cessna turboprop and then two uh, uh, helicopters and then the personnel, the pilots, I think roughly about eight pilots and then support personnel of 15 people. And that was part of that uh, $46, $47 million. And they make it look like that was all in this uh, disproportionality and disparity Item. Well, unfortunately, there was less than two million or not unfortunately, but uh, the problem is, is how do you get 47, 46, 47 million out of a two million dollar budget item? You can't do it. But that's what they're saying is that that money was put into there. So that that's wrong. Basically, uh, even if that whole fund was wiped out, and this is for a program working with uh, families and uh, just a small portion of health and human services, and the information being put out was like it was a state mandated uh, statewide agency deal. That's not the case. It's to help us stay in compliance with federal laws. So outside of that, you look at it. I don't know how you're going to get – Forty-six million out of a less than two million dollar budget, and that, that's what they're doing. But it, you know, it's that fear factor. It's like when uh, uh, schools uh, oftentimes want to do something; they're going to get rid of the crossing guards and the teachers. You know, and, and and it's the same deal. It's a fear factor. Well, if we get rid of all the crossing guards, we're still not going to be able to do that much. But it looks good, and it plays. Uh, you know, and it doesn't make sense, and that's a problem. It was voted down. Uh, you know, and it was fixed in the budget. We already had amounts in there. We had we had passed the budget. We had the items that the DPS department as a whole prioritized, not what, uh, you know, this one person went out and prioritized. Visiting with State Representative John Frulo in studio. We'll take the break. When we come back, we have much more to get into, including future issues that uh, might hit the state legislature. We'll be right back. Back on the chat, HD Show News Talk 790 KFYO, visiting with State Representative John Frulo seeking re-election in HD 84. You mentioned that a lot of people were happy out there, that uh, the people who, you know, you're talking to them, uh, they're happy with the budget, you're happy with some of the, the moves that state legislature has made. What about those who say, yeah, but we could do more, right? We, we could slash more, we could cut taxes more. Do you think that's possible? Well, I think it's always, and you know, we're always looking at that. We're, we, we continue to get rid of the diversions I met, mentioned earlier, the, the funds that are used to balance the budget. Uh, you know, that first session, uh, three sessions ago when I was there, we had about $5 billion that we've done on that. You know, we've cut that down roughly by nearly $2 billion. And so it, it's giving us a better budget, a more transparent budget. The problem is the federal government comes in and they keep increasing things. They, You know, 75% of our budget now is spent on public education, uh, you, you know, a higher education and health and human services. So out of that $209 billion budget we have, you know, over $175 um, 
there are, you know, over 150 million, 150, let me get the numbers right, 150 billion is uh, spent that way. And, and so you, you look at those numbers and, and you say, you get down to what the budget that we actually control at the state level is roughly about 17% of that $209 billion, you know, roughly 30, uh, $35 billion. And that's what we have say over and what we can change. And, and so, you know, we've done a good job with it. But, you know, you can always do more. We're always looking for more, and we're making better changes. Our, our budget, as I said, I think is one of the most transparent budgets we've ever had, and it keeps getting better every year. The, the big impact is, you know, what are we going to do with the price of oil? Well, to some extent, we've, we've done that over you know, several years, um, you know, some, a lot of it before I uh, got into the legislature, if you look back in the 80s, the uh, oil and gas industry was about over 20% of our, um, you know, state activity. Today, it's down to under 14%, which it, it's still an important part. It's a huge part, and it's some of the best paying jobs we have out there. But with that down, in, uh, you know, the price of oil down, that that is going to have ramifications throughout the, the budget. So, you know, but we're always looking at things, how to make it better. It's one of the reasons we say we don't want uh, Obamacare here in the state. It doesn't work. It's crippling. We saw where, uh, you know, the, the companies United, Blue Cross, Aetna have all posted huge losses as far as it's concerned. Aetna over, I think, $100 million. Uh, United uh, had uh, 500, you know, 400 and some million uh, last year, projected 500 million this year. Blue Cross is about 500 million for a two year period, uh, from what I've seen. And, and so it's just, we, we've got to keep fighting the federal government. Visiting with State Representative John Frulo, I think one of the issues that I keep hearing about this race, and it's issues coming from your opponent's campaign. Uh, and, and voters out there who, you know, maybe they, they're undecided, but they keep hearing about SB19, SB19. Uh, your opponent, some of his supporters have brought up that uh, Governor Abbott, uh, I, I guess for lack of a better word, chastised uh, lawmakers for not passing ethics reform, that when it was in the Senate, it was a good bill, went to the House, House muddled it up, and according to the governor, and this is what's been sent out, according to the governor, proposed some, uh, I guess, unconstitutional reforms in that ethics bill. And, and some hold you responsible uh, or partly responsible for part of that. How do you respond? Well, I, I think part of it, uh, saying it was a great bill coming out of the Senate is uh, somewhat of a misnomer. I, I refer back to the part that said that you can't, uh, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but you can't have anything to do with the banking industry if you're in the legislature. Well, that was a shot at one particular person in the Senate from everything that I can gather. I think that, uh, you know, when we get to SB 19, the real crux and the, the missing point on what came from the Senate to the House was the dark money issue. And as far as dark money issue, I, I, I think I'm going to uh, uh, go with uh, Judge Scalia, who said, you know, requiring people to stand up in public for their political acts fosters civic courage, without which democracy is doomed. And basically, it's let's put a spotlight out on there. Last time I was on the show, we, we talked about this a little bit. If somebody is championing a position um, on a bill or on a candidate, wouldn't you like to know whether that's from the Mother Teresa camp or the Adolf Hitler camp? And when these people are putting in a lot of money, and that's what we're talking about, big dollars, uh, you know, that's working on on changing this election process, supporting a candidate. That, that's what we're looking at. Let's just show where the money is. Let, let's see who who is supporting that particular issue. It gives all of us that are voting a better chance to do it. That's what I'm looking for. And, you know, I think that's what we need to look for. This thing's kind of been... Um, made up into things that it isn't. You know, churches are uh, under a different 501c section than what these uh, welfare, uh, social welfare uh, corporations are, the 501c4s that we all hear about. And, and there's certain rules that, that apply there across the, the spectrum to both of them. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of religious organizations that have supported uh, the dark money and think that, you know, it's important to know where that money comes from. So, you know, I, I think it's an area... Uh, the, the the state of Utah went through where their AG was actually uh, elected and then had to leave office through the use of dark money. They have put in the laws in place that require dark money. It's uh, you know we'll see what happens, but uh, uh, to date that has not been challenged uh, uh, at the at the Supreme Court level. And that stands. There's a total of uh, four different states that have uh, these regulations in place. Some of them going back several years that uh, are still standing. So. So, you know, I, I think that's part of the process and just where I stand. If you 
if this would have passed, you know, with the dark money language that was in it. Uh, there are some who say, well, it could lead to retributions against those who donate uh, to these groups. Do you agree well, with that? Well, there's, you know, and there's been several different bills that have passed and done different things. What they're, uh, first off, is limitations on how much that uh, organization spends in total, how much an individual person gives. And then there's also been situations where the person can say, I don't want this, I'm, I'm going to donate to this particular 501c4, but I don't want my money used for campaigns or election, uh, you know, changing the election process. And that money there would not require that person to disclose who it was, who, who they are. And, and so there are ways around that. But, you know, like I said, getting back to Scalia, that's what we want to do is get that information out. Visiting with State Representative John Frulo seeking re-election. Let's say you're re-elected, get to go back down to Austin. What are your priorities when you get down to Austin? Well, of course, the, the, the first priority is making sure that I represent the, the folks here in, in Lubbock. And uh, so this is my uh, area is uh, uh, District 84 is wholly contained within Lubbock. That, that's the uh, the big part of it. Of course, we've got the medical district that we watch out for, Texas Tech, uh, you know, a big part of our uh, community. Um, you know, a- agriculture, I've got, the, you know, uh, several endorsements from several organizations out there uh, uh, saying that, you know, they've, they've worked with me in the past. They like what I do. Uh, they like the way I represent, the way I think, the way I work through issues. And so it's to make sure, you know, that. Uh, th- those things continue to be taken care of, uh, working with the other representatives in you know around the state. I've got some great relationships with a number of uh, uh, representatives, and, and so we're able to get things done. Being chairman of insurance gives me uh, a lot of ability to uh, get things done to work on uh, issues, uh, both insurance-related and outside of insurance. Uh, you know, as far as insurance goes, we've got... Uh, you know, several issues, the hailstorm problem that's uh, sweeping across the state that's, you know, could really make it very difficult to get insurance on homes if, if, if something isn't done. So we're working on that issue. Uh, reinsurance is another issue. That's uh, insurance for insurance companies. So uh, Texas being the 10th largest insurance market in the world, we, we've got a, a plate full there. And, uh, you know, so that, that's exciting. And it, it gives Lubbock uh, a lot of representation in the House. In, in the time that we have left, and we want to get you back in studio uh, and, as we get closer uh, or during the early voting process, uh, so we appreciate you coming in today. Tell folks uh, in the time that we have left, about 30 seconds or so, uh, why they should vote for you. Well, I think the, the best thing is look at the job that I've done, the way I've represented the area, the way I've been able to accomplish items, the number of bills that I've been able to uh, author, get through the House, get through the Senate, and onto the governor to become law. I think that's important. We need somebody that has a proven track record of being able to do that, and mine uh, stands uh, alone by itself as getting stuff done. State Representative John Frulo seeking re-election HD 84 early voting starts next week.